ever watch a puddle like completely vanish on a scorching day or noticed how your coffee cup seems to empty itself overnight? Happens to the best of us. It's easy to overlook evaporation, but today's deep dive is going to reveal it's a total physics fiesta happening at the molecular level. That's right. And guiding us through this is the one and only Feynman with his legendary lectures. Get ready to see how temperature, something we think we know so well, is actually orchestrating way more than meets the eye. What's fascinating is that temperature, you know, it goes beyond just hot or cold. It's really the pulse of the particles within a substance. Like imagine a crowded dance floor, but instead of people, it's molecules in constant motion. Okay, I'm picturing this molecular dance floor, right? And Feynman, he describes these molecules as being stuck in a sort of escape room, bound by attractive forces. To break free and evaporate, they need this like extra energy boost. It's true. It's like paying a cover charge to enter the most exclusive club in town. That's a great analogy. And guess what dictates how easy it is to pay that cover charge? I'm going to guess temperature. Temperature. Higher temperature, more kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. These molecules are bouncing around with more vigor, increasing their chances of transferring enough energy for one lucky molecule to break free and evaporate. So the hotter it is, the wilder the dance party, and the more molecules escape. Exactly. Okay. Now, Feynman being Feynman, he lays down this mind-blowing equation. And bear with me, just a touch of math here. Okay. The rate of evaporation is proportional to E to the power of negative W over KT. Whoa. Looks a bit intimidating. Break it down for us. Yeah, essentially W represents that uh, escape room energy. We talk about the effort needed to overcome those forces holding the molecule captive in a liquid. And to KT, this reflects the average thermal energy available for these escape attempts. Mm. The equation, while a tad complex, tells us that even tiny changes in temperature can have a huge T effect on how readily things transform. Yeah. And it's not just water turning into vapor, but in countless other processes. Okay, so tiny temperature tweaks, big changes. Starting to see why this matters. But it's not just puddles, right? Absolutely not. This E to, to the negative energy over KT pattern, it's like physics greatest hits collection. Oh. It pops up everywhere. Take electrons escaping metal, like in those old school vacuum cubes. Okay, vintage tech connection. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. It's called thermionic emission. Imagine those electrons trapped inside the metal, yearning to break free. Okay. Heat that metal up, give them an energy boost, and bam, so make a run for it. It's basically electron evaporation. No way. So the same principle behind a puddle drying up also explains how old radios work. That's mind-blowing. Precisely. And it doesn't stop at vintage tech. Thermionic emission is still crucial today for things like electron microscopes, yeah. which allow us to see things at an atomic level. It's pretty remarkable. So whether it's brewing a cup of coffee or peering into the microscopic world, this temperature-driven escape act is playing out all around us. And it gets even more fascinating when we consider what's happening in the vast emptiness of space. Remember those escaping electrons? Uh -huh. They're connected to something pretty amazing out there. Even in the freezing vacuum of space, where it seems like there's not enough energy to even get out of bed, let alone ionize atoms, you still find ions hanging out. Hold on, how is that even possible? Space is practically a cosmic freezer. That's where things get really interesting. You see, it's not just about temperature. The density of particles plays a key role, too. Space is almost completely empty, meaning particles are incredibly spread out. It's like a giant game of cosmic tag, mm -hmm. but with astronomically low chances of tagging anyone. So even if an electron gets knocked off an atom, the chances of it finding its way back are incredibly slim because everything is so spread out. You got it. That low density means fewer opportunities for those free electrons and ions to recombine. They're free to roam the cosmic expanse. And guess what? This concept of energy hurdles and temperature pops up again in another surprising area, chemical reactions. Wait, are we about to revisit high school chemistry? Because I may need a refresher. No Bunsen burners this time, don't worry. We're talking about the basic energy exchange that makes reactions tick. Just like those molecules trying to escape the liquid club needed enough energy to get past the bouncer. Sometimes just bumping into each other isn't enough for molecules to react. So it's like needing that extra push to start a DIY project. It's not enough to have the materials you need, a spark of motivation. Perfect analogy. Yeah. That spark is what's called activation energy. It's the energy hurdle that needs to be cleared for a reaction to happen. And here's where the familiar pattern reappears. The rate of a reaction depends on E to the negative activation energy over KT. 
So higher temperature translates to more molecular collisions with enough energy to clear that hurdle, leading to faster reactions. That's why food cooks faster at higher temperatures, or if you're not careful, explodes in the microwave. Exactly. But here's another layer. Catalysts can make this whole process more efficient. They're like that friend who helps you tackle that DIY project, lowering the activation energy without changing the end result. They make it easier for the reaction to happen, but don't alter the final product. It's fascinating how catalysts work behind the scenes. Indeed. Catalysts are essential for countless industrial processes, from creating fertilizers to producing fuels. But now let's switch gears from chemical reactions to something even more mind-boggling. Remember how we talked about Planck and his discovery that energy levels in matter are quantized, meaning energy comes in discrete packets? Yeah, like those old-school arcade tokens instead of a bottomless credit card. Well, Einstein used Planck's formula to unlock a revolutionary understanding of light. He realized that light isn't just a continuous wave as previously thought. It also behaves as if it's made up of individual particles of energy, which we call photons. Wait, so light is both a wave and a particle? My brain just did a loop-de-loop. -loop. That's the beauty and mystery of quantum mechanics. Yeah. It's mind-bending, but it's fundamental to our understanding of the universe. And here's where it gets even more exciting. Einstein's work on light ultimately led to the prediction and invention of lasers. Lasers. Are we talking science fiction pew 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 here? Well, yes and no. While lasers do have their pew 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 applications, there's so much more than that good that Einstein's work laid the groundwork for understanding how atoms interact with light, leading to the concept of stimulated emission. Okay, I'm all ears. What is stimulated emission? Imagine an atom absorbing a photon of light with just the right amount of energy. This causes the atom to jump to a higher energy level, but it doesn't stay there forever. Eventually, it wants to return to its lower energy state. When it does, it releases that energy as a photon of light, which is called spontaneous emission. So it's like those glow-in-the-dark toys. They absorb energy and release it as light later. You're on the right track. But here's the fascinating part. If a photon with the right energy hits an atom that's already excited, it can stimulate that atom to release its stored energy as a photon that's perfectly in sync with the incoming photon. So it's like a perfectly synchronized photon dance party. Precisely. And if we can get enough atoms to do this synchronized release, we get a laser, a focused beam of light with all its photons vibrating in unison. That's incredible. So lasers are basically synchronized bursts of atomic energy. You could say that. Yeah. And the applications go far beyond just pew, pew, pew. Although, as I said, that is pretty cool. We're talking barcode scanners, DVD players, fiber optic communication, even the potential for future fusion power. Wow. From puddle evaporation to space ions to lasers who knew temperature played such a central role in all of this. It's all connected and it gets even more mind blowing when we consider how we can use our understanding of these processes to manipulate temperature itself. So we've seen how temperature can drive these just like incredible processes from molecules escaping a puddle to atoms releasing these synchronized photons in a laser. Right. But here's a thought. Okay. Can we flip the script? Can we hack these processes to control temperature itself? Now, that's a question that takes us to the cutting edge of material science and thermodynamics. Okay. Just as heat can drive certain processes, some processes can actually absorb heat, uh -huh. leading to some very chilly results. So kind of like the opposite of those hand warmer packets that use exothermic reactions to heat up. Yeah. We're talking endothermic reactions that suck the heat out of their surroundings. You got it. One area where this principle is being explored is thermoelectric cooling. Mm -hmm. Certain materials, when you run an electrical current through them, exhibit a temperature difference across their surfaces. Mm -hmm. One side gets hot, the other gets cold. Wait a minute, are you saying we can pump heat around with electricity? Like a heat pump, but potentially way more efficient and without all those moving parts. Precisely. Thermoelectric cooling is already used in some specialized applications, like cooling computer chips, and even in portable refrigerators. It's amazing to think about how our understanding of temperature has evolved. From harnessing the power of steam engines to developing sophisticated electronics, it's shaped so much of human history and technology. And with these advancements like thermoelectric cooling, we're on the verge of even more innovative applications that could completely change how we control and manipulate heat. It really speaks to the power of curiosity and the endless wonders that physics continues to reveal. From a simple puddle to the vastness of space and even to the potential of future technology, who knew the concept of temperature could be so fascinating. The more we delve into this seemingly simple concept, the more we uncover its profound influence on the universe and our place in it. 
It's a journey of discovery that never really ends. Feynman would be so excited. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And remember, sometimes the most everyday phenomena can lead to the most mind-blowing discoveries. Until next time, keep those brains curious.